Hello, and welcome to Making an Opera Score in Dorico with me, Ben. Now, here is an opera score that I've been working on. Um, it's Costantino by Antonio Lotti, as is evident. Um, and all I've done now, so far, is to enter the notes. There are no manual adjustments or alterations of any kind. It's just the information as as I put, typed it in and then Dorico has just laid it out automatically. So of course the first thing we notice is the great feature of flows where each little piece of music is a separate little piece of music. Uh, each with its own flow heading, its title and um, they follow on one after another. Um, so that's done in layout options, flows, new flows allow on an existing page, we'll make them run on after each other, show flow headings for all flows, and um, and there we are. And you know, so this opera score is now pretty much, well, it's, it's a start certainly. So there we've got all of this at no effort whatsoever on my part, which is always good. Now let's have a look at those flow headings. You'll see there that I've got not only the name, the number, but also a bit more information. What I have here, I have my imported uh, bag of page templates and the like. Let's look at flow headings. The default, so flow number, flow title, flow subtitle and I also have a large flow heading which has other information in addition and I have an empty one if I want to remove a title from a flow for any any reason. Uh, so those are my flow headings and then obviously I just in project information I just use type in the subtitle and uh, any other information that I might need um, and that all just goes into the flow heading. So let's um, let's have a look at here. So we want to add some other information to page 5 so we just change the flow heading to large on this page only. You can also just change the margins for a given page keeping the same flow heading if, for instance, you've got lots of text that needs to fit in there. Um, and we will, there we are, so we've now got our um, information about the scene. Um, I also have a page template for sections, which, um, so let's go, obviously, Act 2, I want uh, the start of each act, uh, let's see, scene one, I obviously want that to um, be on a new page and be in a slightly more impressive um, arrangement. So let's get to page 50 and apply a page template change and let's have section there and see what that does. That will, there we are, so now for that we have the other information above that and we're missing something. Act 2, scene 1, I've used, the great thing, you can use any fields you want, obviously in project info, it doesn't have to be, you know, there we are, Act 2 at the top there. So that's what I do for the start of each act. Um, and speaking of using any old field, you'll notice there I've got work number, which I've also mirrored the title uh, of the scene there. The reason for that is during an aria, I actually want the page header to have Act 2, Scene 1, and not the name of the aria. So, but obviously that's entirely up to you. So there we are. That um, is 
how to just lay out everything with titles and things like that. Some other tricks with flows. Um, now, most of my flows are some strings, a singer, and the continuo line. So if I were to create a new flow, I would get all these instruments, most of which are only used occasionally, and then I would have to untick them all. Uh, so it's a lot easier to just keep a spare like that and then duplicate it uh, as I go along. And then that is quicker than messing around customizing each flow every time. The other great thing about duplicating a flow is, let's have a look at this, Act 5, Scene 12. If I duplicate that, I get, anyone guess? Act 5, Scene 13. So that's nice. It automatically increments the number on the end. Uh, so that's really that. Let's talk about setup. Um, you can see I've used fairly conventionally one different player for each of the characters. Um, I have a, then a reset player. The advantage of that is that I can then just add that player to a continuo part if they want to see the reset uh, vocal line. Um, for the actual resets then all I do is just add uh, text to show where the singer is singing. I mean I could muck about with changing players but um, there's no point really. Another thing is some of my uh, arias have a tutti single violin part and others have uh, the conventional firsts and seconds. Now, because it's only because it's an entire flow that it just has a unison line, I haven't used condensing, which is another great Dorico feature, but I think it's kind of easier in this case, uh, and I can to just have a separate instrument, I can give it a unique uh, name like that. And then when it comes to the parts, so violin one, I then just add the tutti part and the same for violin two. And because every flow has either got tutti violin or violin one, then um, there should be, you won't get two staves uh, together anywhere and you just get one, uh, one line for every flow, and every flow should be included. Now, obviously, that part, and I would do all the parts in one go when... I mean, what have I got singers there? <laughs> um, so I can select all of those and change uh, things like uh, allow on existing page. So that I can do. And then, obviously, there we are. That's all... Um, all that needs now is some judicious application of system breaks and frame breaks to get the page turns in the right places. But essentially, that's the violin part done, and there we go. Right, uh, let's move on to... Um, what are we going to move on to? We're going to move on to spacing. Yes, you will have noticed that uh, Dorico does a... Its spacing is pretty good, but what happens at the end of a flow it tends to need a bit of help. So let's find um, a suitable uh, thing. So here we are. Right, so we'll notice here we are. We've got a typical aria where... Uh, we've just got this annoying extra bar on the end. Now, obviously, these days in Dorico 4, you could just select that and knock it back uh, with um, doing that. Uh, there's a... Uh, commands aren't there. That's I'm using comma there to just add a system break and knock it back. But that's maybe a bit cramped. 
uh, what I prefer to do is to um, basically look at the entire aria and use note spacing. So I can either uh, knock that down. I'm using a fairly tight default to start with. Um, yep, and we can see that's uh, moved move that measure over it's basically but it's spaced the entire aria uh, rather than just one line and obviously I can go the other way I could go up to something like three and five eighths and get an extra system if I thought that that spacing was a bit better and then if I want to make fine adjustments with a system break I can do that there so that's really all I do. And then they might need some uh, tweaking of system spaces and things, but um, usually I do very little of that. And um, there we are. So let's move on to creating a contents page. Now, uh, amongst my, my bag of imported page templates I have a contents page so let's have a look at the thing here it is uh, so I have all these tokens flow one title flow two title flow three etc etc flow one first page flow two first page etc 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 so how do we get that into our score right well, all we do is get to page one and we insert pages. So we insert two pages and we're going to use the contents template. And there we are. We now have our contents page. Obviously, it needs a bit of work, uh, mostly tidying up. Uh, we'll come to that in a minute, but first of all, I want to show you that uh, what was page one is now page three, but it still has its first page template. And um, you remember we were... Uh, what was page five is now page seven, and the change to the flow heading has been shifted up. So that's all good. And let's check if you remember we did page 50, didn't we? And that's now on page 52. So there we are. So it's um, now these pages are overrides. So there's no real point in messing about with the template uh, itself. Uh, you might as well just make whatever changes you need to the page 88. Uh, so mm, now. This one, um, oh, yeah, this is a bit tricky. You have to remember exactly what's going on because it's so narrow. But hopefully that should then work. There we are. So that's our contents page. One other thing, you might want your contents page on a right-hand page, not a left-hand page, so that people see it as soon as they turn over. So swap with next page and bingo. Right, uh, the only other thing I think left to mention is uh, comments. Uh, comments, the source has G for the first note and it's been changed to A. Um, comments are a great way of uh, making your critical commentary, editorial notes, call them what you want um, as you go along. And then you can export to, uh, it's a web page, but you can then just copy this information and then use that in your notes. And there are automatic ways in text editors of manipulating it so you can get rid of the date if you don't want that information and things like that. Uh, so that is that. Yes, uh, obviously the rest of my titling pages I will do in uh, DTP software and then combine PDFs. But there we are, that's it. That's how you make an opera score in Dorico.